WNST, Towson, Baltimore. Baltimore Positive. We are uh, positively doing the Maryland Crab Cake Tour. We are out in West Baltimore in the city, right near Calhoun Street. We're at the 2601 Wilkins Avenue. We're at Spirits West. I, I love the menu because it reminds me, you've eaten at a lot of Waffle Houses, Chad, you know. Yes. So this guy lived in Atlanta and New Orleans. He's Mr. Mr. Waffle House. It has a Waffle House style, but a delicious menu. They got club sandwiches here. Crab cakes are coming out in the next segment. Rick Kehoe, uh, the proprietor of all things Notre Dame and uh, Oriole Baseball here um, and, uh, and a lot of UFC stuff. We're at, right by Mount St. Joe, the homeland of Chris Pica. I thought I was going to get rid of you, Pica, but I'm not because uh, you're Mr. Rock and Roll. I ran into I, you with a rock. I ran into you with John Mellencamp. <laughs> I fight yes. authority. Authority always yes. wins. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. It's all brought to you by the Maryland Lottery. Uh, we're giving these away out here at Spirits West and our friends at Window Nation, 866 nation Take care of our sponsors. We're going to be at Fadley's next Thursday morning. Speaking of sponsors, uh, going to be at Pappas in Glen Burnie. I'm working out the date with uh, County Executive Stuart Pittman. Also working out a date with Johnny O to get him over to Shannon's Pub in Halethorpe. We are going to be at Costas on August the 3rd, celebrating our 25th anniversary um, at WNST. Uh, it's exciting. I'm probably going to cry. I found some old Get Nasty stuff. found some old Houston Oilers stuff. Mm. John McClain and I, I sent him a picture of my Houston Oiler uh, pom-pom ski hat from 1979. Uh, so I might get Dan Pastorini on the show, too. It might be nice, time to do nice. that again. Uh, Billy White, you were there when I danced with Billy White Shoes, were you not? I was not. Wow! He, did, he danced with me on Radio Row in Atlanta. I did the dance with him. Billy White Shoes Johnson. Yeah. And I know you knew him a little bit with the Falcons, yes. right? Yep. Chris Pike is here. Chad Weasling, agent to the stars, star running backs. That's why he's still, you know, driving one of Dennis's. Coons Baltimore Ford <laughs> hybrid models. Uh, and uh, Chad's an agent here in Baltimore and Canton. If you missed the last segment, please go check it out. Uh, Chris is also here. And, and we did a lot of football. We did a, I, I, I want to do rock and roll with you because I was afraid you were going to bag out. Piker was a little iffy because of his wife this week. And my wife had car. I had all sorts of issues today, right? But I, I, you hit me this morning, and I was a little afraid you weren't showing because you were my star guest. So you today. saw, so you saw my, you saw the text coming to me like, oh boy, here it comes. Oh man, what here the hell's going He's on not now? Coming. What's yeah. going on now? You know. That's your players. Not <laughs> yeah, exactly, you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, so, so for me, I, I looked down and, and you sent me like it's. I would get the exact text here, and you said something like, um, "We cool today? Are we doing video? Because I want to wear my child's play shirt." Right. And I'm like, well, you should wear your child's play shirt. So what, what do you know about me? that I? Because I don't know you that well. Like, we've had a couple of beers over 25 years. Uh, we share a mutual friend who was a former teammate of yours and a friend of mine. I'm Mike down in Florida. Actually, Mike's not in Florida. We're going to be at The Cure together. Whenever I'm alone with you, we're going to be at The Cure on Sunday night at Merriweather. With Victoria. Hey, Victoria, I'm Vicky Strong. Yes. So uh, absolutely, so see. Um, but I, I don't know you that well in that way, but I know that you love rock and roll and yes. Collins and I. I've been at a million concerts together in a million places. <laughs> You're a concert guy. My wife said to me the other night, you want to go see Dave Matthews Saturday night? I might be going up to, fingers crossed, I have jury duty tomorrow. Oh, let, good for you. I, I'm 20, 32 minutes away from being able to get cut. Okay. Johnny O, cut me. Uh, <laughs> cut me, Mick. Um, so, How much you get now? 15 bucks? 30. Oh, 30. I'm in the county now, baby. Oh, okay. Ca it's you 15, live in the city. 15 in the city. city. The city's in 30. 30. So I'm, I'm due next oh, month. Oh, did what they you raise it? You get 30? Yeah, 30 in the city. All okay. right. Well, either way, I don't want the 30 bucks. I want to go to New York and see Mike Peters of The Alarm is okay. playing a gathering this weekend in wow. New York. Anybody that knows me knows how much I love Mike. I got to get Mike on the show. He's never done my show. Uh, his wife's a, a friend of me. She, they're friends of mine. And um, he formed a thing called Love, Hope, Strength. Power rock and roll. He's battled leukemia. He had to cancel the show from February to get to get a treatment uh, yeah. over in the UK and Wales. They've just opened the bar over there. They're beautiful people. Uh, I've known him, God, since 1985, 86. Richard Abrahams got me a copy of Strength. It became one of my wife's uh, anthems to, to battle cancer. So anyway, we're trying to do this this weekend. And you hit me with the rock and roll thing. What do you know about me and Charles? Because I, I don't know that you know of my, my interior with Charles Player. Do you not? Well... Uh, what I know is, uh, I think things that you've told me over the years with those few beers is that um, I think you know you're from Dundalk, and didn't you go to school with John? John and I have known you, each other. You've known him for a little while, so years old, so yes. you know I, I know. I went a, through the story last month because he's one of my closest friends. Like 
in the world today, right? right. Like yeah. through all these years, we haven't always been that close. But he and his wife are the people we go to dinner with yeah, yeah. when we go to dinner. Right. And when we go out and we're doing things, and he's the one who will text me and say, hey, you and Jen want to get lunch? Yeah, well, let's go to right. Towson and get lunch. I'm in the neighborhood, <laughs> you know? So nobody else does that, and John's been around the world. John and yeah. I grew up eight blocks from each other. If there weren't a highway in the way, maybe seven blocks away. Right. And But we grew up in different in different neighborhoods. Right. So we didn't really know each other until like sixth grade, seventh grade. Yeah. And he was always a drummer. He was always a rock and roll. Hell, hell of a drummer, man. Hell of a drummer. Yeah, and my wife had never seen him And great him front drum. man. And great front My man. wife has seen Stone Horses, Trump City Devils, like all of that. She had never seen him drum. Yeah. Um, she'd never seen Trump City Devils. She'd never seen him drum. And she knows all about it. Mean, we're friends. Yeah, We've right. gone out to dinner... She had gone out to dinner with him a dozen times before she ever saw him on a stage sing. Right. And she found that to be like, wow, what is he does that? And right. I'm like, you've never seen him drum. Right. He drummed one night on the Sarah Fleischer um, yeah, down at the, tribute night down at, at Ramshead. Ramshead, yeah. Unbelievable night. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable night. Like... Tom Kiefer came out. Yeah, it was like, yeah. unbelievable. Kicks and Child's Play like joined forces. Yeah, yeah. It was insane. It, I hope somebody has video of it. But so she had never, she wasn't there that night. She had never seen him drum. She, the Child's Play show last summer, right. she got sick at the Best of Baltimore party. It was in the middle of the Crab Cake tour last August yep. at Soundstage. She didn't go that night. Right. She's never seen him drum. Right. We showed up. Sticks left us tickets at M3 yeah. back in May, right? And we're going. We got there at twelve. See, I saw you. I saw you and Jen walking by. And then remember, I sent you a picture of. I took a picture of John. With this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this, and I, I sent you a picture of, I, uh, you know, John up on stage. Obviously, he didn't have his shoes on. Is a tribute. Where he's wearing the white. Tribute, yeah, yeah, tribute yeah. to to Brian Jack, which I got. Uh, a lot of people are like, why does he got? Why does he have his bare feet? I'm like, that's because that's Brian Jack, man. Which I thought was very, very cool of John to do that. But, um, yeah, so I saw you there. Like, and, and, and we had stories over the but time. we got there at noon early, and, and Styx gave us tickets, like, in the fifth row. Right. We were, like, right oh, in yeah, the yeah, middle. Oh, yeah, you were, you were we up were there, We were way bro. up in the front, <laughs> and we went. I was back in the back. I saw him, like, I oh, okay. I there was nobody there at noon. There were a couple thousand people there at yeah. noon. But it was very scattered on M3, you know, yeah. that kind of day. And I walked down to the front, and my wife watches him sing. And then she, like, watching him drum, she had yeah. never seen him drum. So she had never seen like, and I said, yeah. imagine when he had hair like mine. I right. let my hair down. It's a rock and roll segment, right? But so like, I grew up with John. So when you said you had this shirt, I thought you had the old school. No, I wish I did. The old I school stuff, the, what, the rat race like t-shirt? Yes, yeah. yes. So no, I, think, I think I've outgrown those. I can't put them on anymore. No, exactly. <laughs> I have actually found like, I, I which drives me crazy with t-shirts. This one actually fits good. Thanks, uh, Child's Play. It's modern. But yeah, yeah. But you know, there's t-shirts. I mean, these are t-shirts. I go to concerts and I I always got to buy a t-shirt even though I know they're going to be shitty t-shirts. You know, they're the fruit of the loom, like right. uh, heavy cotton, yeah, right. you know, and I understand. cotton. And yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand like, the merch booth. Yeah, I understand. And they're, you know, 40, 50, you know, I went to Iron Maiden, which was phenomenal at the Cap Center in, in um, you know, in fall, like last November. I interviewed Dickinson and, in like 88. And they, you know, their, their t-shirts are like 65 bucks. And I'm like, I know this shirt's not going to fit right. But and you want to so, make a contribution. But I was like, yeah, I'm like, but I got to get one. And they have like. Got 200 different versions of Iron Maiden t-shirts. I'm like, I got to get one. Of course, it doesn't fit right. And <laughs> did, you get an Eddie? did you get an Eddie or what did you get? Uh, yes, I did get an Eddie one, yeah, yes. you got to contribute to Nico. Yes, you know? yeah. I, I was in Maui uh, on a beach, a big beach, and they told me he lives up the hill. Right. One of, one of the main Is that right? I'm wow. like, yeah, you know, good for him. He's in yeah. Maui, you know. Um, but the, the rock and roll thing for me, it, it's been my whole like life right, as a yeah. critic and through all of this stuff. And I, I, Child's Play to me, they were my neighborhood band. They, you know, Idzy and I, mm-hmm. seventh grade together in homeroom. Uh, and Nick, you know, I've known Nick since seventh grade as well. Right. Um, and his family. I was with Nick's brother-in-law at State Fair having lunch yesterday. Nick's brother-in-law is uh, is a manager at State Fair. So, uh, I mean, we're talking about, like, Baltimore people. Right. And they put this thing back together, and God rest Brian, yeah, you yeah. know. Um, best Brian story I got for you, because Brian was always – uh, with a girlfriend and trouble back in the band, yeah, yeah. and they were always trying to make it, right. and like all that. All my stories in the paper, and John would corrobor- corroborate all this, but John <laughs> didn't even know about this. I had a band at the turn of the century, Ridgemont High. Ron West, who's now in, um, in the Cultivated, 
I got up and did an alarm song with them a couple weeks ago at the Emerald Tavern. Nice. Um, so I sang in a band called Ridgemont High for about five years. My wife was the Yoko Ono of the band. She okay. worked the band up with me <laughs> in 03. Right. You're doing what on a Saturday Damn. night at 2 in the morning, and there's smoke, and it's awful, and it's loud, and you're right. making 200 bucks now. And I didn't really – I just – it didn't run its course. Right, Paul right. Lamantia, a legitimate guitar player uh, who was in a great band in the 80s, was, had Eddie, Eddie yeah. Van Halen – hair and like all that he was in walk-ins welcome great country band packed places loonies harford county the whole deal for many years paul cuts my hair when it gets cut gentlemen's gentlemen uh joppa road give him a call six uh i don't give his number out in the air but <laughs> gentlemen's gentlemen paul so paul's my guitar player ace is my keyboard player and i'm the singer in the band and we did 80s throwback music right. you know spandau ballet bonjo you know cars yeah. you know you name it right so we're playing at the the, the, the cellar on Route 40 in Ellicott City. Is it called the cellar? Does that sound right? No. It was a cellar. It was like a brick cellar right on Route 40. And we're playing on a Saturday night. And the band was maybe a couple, two years in. We had a little bit of a following. There were, you know, 50, 60 people there right. at Saturday night and late at night. And we're dancing and, and, and Brian Jack shows up. It's all right. So Brian's there because they were booking bands that yeah. we, we were like a crappy band, you yeah. know. They were booking real bands there, um, and so we were in there playing. And Brian Jacks there sees me, hey, what's up? And um, and he was, you know, he was loose. Yeah. You know, I uh, yeah. love Brian. He was loose that night. Yeah, what, he was real loose. And he came up to me. He's like, hey man, I want to get up with this song with you guys. And I'm like, I'd love that. I right. lo- love that. Sure. And and <laughs> Paul's like. I got a guitar? Yeah, sure. Yeah, let, let me, let, we'll plug in. Right. What, what do you want to do? And he looked at the set list. He's like, I'll do Rebel Yell with you guys. And I'm like, okay, let's do Rebel Yell. You know, so it was our encore song. Brian came up and got on stage and we duetted. I haven't, I, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting emotional. I've never told this story in the air. He, we got up and did Rebel Yell together. And I, so, like, that was, like, an amazing thing, you know? Right. I love Brian. Yeah. So the Child's Play logo is on these shirts at Soundstage that night, and it's the old shirts. Yeah. So we're talking Fruit of the Loom 1980. Yeah. Jack Dean couldn't afford Fruit of the Loom. I, it was Fruit of, <laughs> Fruit of Essex is what it was. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so the shirts are, and John later told me, he's like, my wife, we've had these shirts 20 years in boxes. They're from my parents' house. When my parents died, I had to clean it out. It was terrible, but I found all my old child's place right, stuff. Right. And he's like, we did it, they did it for charity, you know, mm-hmm, that yeah. night. It was, mm-hmm. it was for Brian's charity, yeah. right? And, and the bidding got hot. The bidding was, you know, 75. 80, and I swear to God, I looked at it and I wanted the shirt. And once it got to like 80 bucks or 100 bucks, the thing I thought is... It's not going to fit. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. But you would have had it, though. You know, you would have had it. I wanted it to fit. You know? Right, right, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I told John this over dinner a couple weeks ago. He's like, I'm going to find your shirt, man. I'm going to find your right. shirt. And I, I texted him this morning. I said, this NFL agent loves you and your band, and he sent me a – he's got a his shirt. He's like, he sent me a picture of that on M3. And it was you. Right. You, you yeah, sent yeah. him a picture? No, no, no. I, I, no, I sent it to I you. I sent it to you. Oh, yeah. I sent it to him. Right, yeah. I don't know. I drank that day. Right, yeah, 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 exactly. I don't exactly. Know. It's M3. Chad Weasling's here. We're at Spirits West. So I want to do a little rock and roll with you because this morning I said to you, who were your bands? And this well, you said in the late 70s, so you were like, you Well, know. I mean, yeah, yeah. so I collect Pacifica belt buckles. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's mm-hmm. my thing, yeah. right? So they were only made from 75 to 79. Okay. And I, I'm convinced... That they never paid any of these. I don't know. There's no. Nah. There's nowhere on the internet you can Google this. Right. Everybody knows what these are of our age. You've seen yeah, these yeah. belt buckles. You remember these? I belt think buckles? so. Yeah, yeah. So they they came out. I only owned one in my in my childhood. I right. owned a Led Zeppelin belt buckle right. that I bought at KB at East Point Mall, and it was a tough decision because the fog hat one, the heart one. They and I loved Zeppelin, but I loved Rush more. But right. The Zeppelin belt looked sexier to me at the time. Oh, yeah, it glittered yeah. differently. Right. And In Through the Outdoor had just come out. Robert Plant had just lost his son and, you know, all of my love. I hadn't discovered what an incredible song Cara Salambra was going to be mm-hmm. or I, 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 I'm Going to Crawl. I'm Going to Crawl might be my favorite Zeppelin song. So I bought this belt buckle and for 35 years of my life, from 1979, 1980, through 2000 and it's through my wife's cancer through 2016 I owned a Led Zeppelin belt buckle and never owned a belt okay 
It was on a childhood Indian belt that I had that was made of leather that somehow I acquired in 1978. Right. It didn't fit, but it, it had a belt loop that filled a belt buckle. Right. My belts were always like grown-up belts that were Ralph Lauren with a belt buckle that, you know, like. Right. So I never wore it. My wife surprised me on Christmas, like maybe 15 or 16. She went on the internet and bought me a Rush belt buckle that was a modern. It had the Rush logo on the back, and it, right. it was from the band. It was, yeah. li- it was licensed. Okay. Getty and Alex and, and, and Neil's estate all made a few bucks on it. God bless them. I want them to, right? But she actually got me a belt, and I looked at the belt. I'm like, that's a crappy belt. I said, you know, she's like, I'm still wearing it. It's the only belt that I've right. ever had in my life. That right. It's a leather belt that had a belt buckle. This is where John Allen comes in. Okay. So I'm out with John drinking. Imagine that. <laughs> I was actually going to Eugene Monroe's house for a party. Former NFL yeah, player. Yeah. He, John lives out by him in Howard County. John and I are at a wine bar, and he looks down, and he sees my belt. He's like, dude, that's a Led Zeppelin belt buckle. And I'm like, yeah. He's like, I got like three. Like, I got an Aerosmith. I got a Stevie Wonder, and I have the other Led Zeppelin with the blimp. Right. And I'm like... Text Aaron. I want to see what they look like. And then we hit our phones two years ago. We had just gotten out after the plague, and I started Googling Pacifica belt buckles. Right. And I start seeing all the ones, like the cars that I didn't buy, right. the police that are really hard to get. And I saw them, and I started to see the pricing on them and thinking, they're not an investment, but if I buy them, they're going to go up in value, and right. I'm going to get to wear them. Right. And you know what? They all fit. Unlike shirts, they right. all fit. <laughs> right. So along the way, you, the first thing you said to me, so I gave you classic rock. So today we're going to have fun. Of course, I liked Frampton Comes Alive. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was like. So this is the one I wore for you today. In addition to the Stone Horses shirt for you, John Allen, whom I love. Uh, and I don't care who knows it. This is the Frampton Comes Alive belt buckle. So this is, it says on the back, Pacifica 1976. It's an original. And this was <laughs> one of the first. 15 or 20 that I purchased because it wasn't a super expensive one. Right, right. The Kiss one's really expensive. Right. I guarantee they got every I had. I mean, that. I don't know if it was a, that brand, but it, now talking belt buckles, I remember getting uh, a belt buckle, and it was the, the Kiss Destroyer yep. uh, photo. And I, I don't have it anymore, hell. I, I made sure well, it, threw, it was thrown out or something, you know, you know, over the years. That's a shame because I, know, I, it is a shame. I had my hands on it this morning and didn't bring it, right. but here's what I did bring. I'm like a magician. This feels like a magic act. <laughs> I, I, I brought. I didn't bring you. I, I didn't bring you Destroyer, but I brought you the next album. Ah, there you going. go. Wow, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, there you go, man. A little love. Spencer's gun gifts. I mean, just a wall of you know those. So this one here is an original from 1977, and the difference is this has a stamp on the back that looks like a Pegasus horse, and this is when Bill a coin, who. Everything Kiss is stamped A U C O I N. He was the man. He was the U. He was okay. the agent of right. Kiss. He was the manager right. who did all their deals, all their licensing right. deals, all their many, many licensing deals, including <laughs> their coffins, probably in the yeah. end. <laughs> and I love Paul Stanley. Um, and I love Kiss. And I love Kiss Alive One. My cousin Nelson gave me the album in 1976. Changed my life. Yeah. Made me grow my hair long. The whole deal. So uh, the Kiss belt buckles are the more expensive ones. I picked this one up at a reasonable price recently and I got a destroyer one with it that's a little more banged up. Right. I didn't bring the destroyer because it's a little chipped up yeah. and I didn't want to be embarrassed but but and the value obviously it's like a baseball card, right? I mean the nicer they are, yeah. the better. So I, I I I bring these out and this is a really nice kiss belt buckle that I picked up on the cheap oh, and yeah. did a little uh did a little repair. You remember this one? Yes I, I do. That. I this do is, remember this, that one, this yeah. is, so by the time it got here, so the belt buckles were very humble in nineteen seventy six. Yeah. And if you see the back they're kind of dingy and then by when a coin bought them, he put the kiss flare on them, right? right? So of course it had to have the I was made for loving you, baby. <laughs> so this is the blue you can't even see it it's on the It's the disco thing. version. It's yep. the disco version. Yep. And by then they all had the a coin on them and they were all a coin stamped. And you know, through my collection, and I have more of these than I care to admit at this point. Um, but I, I, I grabbed a couple on the way out the door because I had worn the Frampton one. Right. Because I was heading out the door, and you hit me, said Frampton. I put it on, yeah. and then you're like, "But I loved Kiss." Yeah, yeah. So well, then I the so, early Kiss. So you right. said you know, AC/DC that, yeah. Bon Scott. So yeah. the interesting thing is, one of the most expensive belts in the market is a, is a it's a Leonard Skinner. It's the Confederate flag, Leonard Skinner. Yeah. I remember, it, I said Leonard Skinner was one of my. But the too. Leonard Skinner belt was worn by Bon Scott 
on an entire tour, the whole Highway to Hell tour, he wore the Leonard Skinner belt buckle. Right. You go look at the pictures. Right, right. I will You'll now. Google Bond <laughs> Scott Leonard Skinner belt buckle. Right, right. You'll see, and and it is it is, it is uh, it's considered the you know the holy grail because Bond Scott wore it. ACDC didn't break in America till '80 company was yeah, out of business right. now you can get an acdc belt buckle mm-hmm. thunder you know you can buy it on the internet but you can't buy these right, right? right. it's like buying you can buy a knockoff pink floyd with dark side of the moon but you can only buy the only two pink floyds that were made by pacifica right and they look like they were made in 1977 or 78 but once they got disco you can see the, the metamorphosis with one of your other favorite bands, which oh, is? Yep. Yeah, Boston. Boston, yeah. okay. So there's Boston like 1 Boston from then, the huh? A-track, right. right? So that's that's Boston 1. Hit after hit. Right more there, than a bro. feeling. No Let me take you home tonight. So then <clears throat> Boston 2 comes out, and uh, don't look back. And Bill Coin gets a hold of the uh, – gets a hold of the um, – uh, of the brand, and they go disco, right? <laughs> yeah. So there, it, it actually looks like the third stage, 1986. This is one of the most beautiful belts in my collection. This is the uh, this is Boston, and this is a really hard belt to get. Right. This is like a really rare. This is a perfect belt. It's never been worn by anyone. It came from a guy who had a head shop and a record store in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. I found them on the internet. <laughs> he sold me four perfect belts that were very hard to get: Pink Floyd belt, a Heart belt, a Boston belt, and a Cars belt. Right. That were that are all all really tough belts. And then uh, and then by the time a coin got a hold of it, they yeah. went uptown and it looks like it looks like this it looks like the Skateland in Essex and in Dundalk <laughs> in 1979 <laughs> playing Skateland. off the wall by Michael Jackson, right? Uh, yeah, Does yeah, it not? Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and last but not least, my first ever belt buckle um, this is the Led Zeppelin belt buckle. Oh, this, yeah. That's a good looking yeah, buckle. That's, yeah. that's a good looking buckle, it right? Is, yes. So it's got the swan on it, and this is the in through the outdoor Led Zeppelin. And I hope that the light is, is picking it up in here. But these things are kind of cool. Yeah. So when I so when I, I had this on my waist, John Allen begat my my wife would say you were a little obsessed with this dumb hobby, you know. <laughs> but she right. she's not like that. Right, she right, actually right. thinks it's cool. Every right. time one comes in, I got a ZZ Top one the other day, and she looked at it. She's like, "That's a good looking belt," mm-hmm. you know. So I wear them every day of my life. They well, you all got a fit. great point. It's like baseball cards. I mean, you got a great point. I mean, they're they're collectibles and and uh, yeah, shoot. I mean, if you're a, a music buff or a rock and roll guy and you have these things, like. You know, they got to be worth something. Well, I wear them as a tribute to the artist, right? Yeah. So Sunday night, I'm going to see The Cure. Right. The Cure's guitar player is a guy named Reeves Gabrels. Gabrels. Uh, Reeves' wife was the publicist for Robert Plant on the, the Manic Nirvana tour. So his ex-wife, it was a long time ago, it was 35 years ago, I had lunch with Robert Plant, mm. Philip Johnstone, who was the... Uh, tall cool one the keyboard yeah. player in that band and and his wife then was the publicist he reeves gabrell i met later when he was the guitar player in tin machine with david bowie wow. i went to dinner with david bowie he played at the capitol ballroom in dc on the tin machine tour right. and reeves so reeves is a facebook friend he's the guitar player in the cure i'm gonna wear my bowie belt buckle on right. sunday night there you go so i, I always find an angle like yeah um I saw um, uh, J.D. Souther at Ramshead. J.D. Souther wrote New Kid in Town with the Eagles, um, but he also was a key founding member with Poco. So mm-hmm. I had a Poco belt with this beautiful horse on it that mm-hmm. I wear. So all these 70s belts, they come back. They're stupid, but if you wanted to wear your Child's Play shirt yeah, and it meant something, yeah. I was going to wear a I wanted Peter to bring Franklin a little Baltimore flair. Is that you know, good? A rock you like and roll that? flair, yes. Peter Fr- so if you ever need to borrow one, you just have to have a belt. All right. And don't bitch at Jen, your Jen, not my Jen, <laughs> about your belt. Because right. I bitched at my wife about this belt. And if I go to New York this weekend, the only thing that's, that's on nice. my list, this belt's starting to wear out. But she got me this belt on a, a Rush belt buckle about six years ago, and it's the only belt I own. <laughs> so I change this belt every day, and I can move from Boston 1 to Boston 2. Um, but I'm going to put the Peter Frampton one back on. That's, like having, that's yeah. like having old tour books. Yeah. You know, they don't yeah. do anymore. Remember, they're the really nice full-color tour books we all would get. You know, you'd when you that. see that picture right there, do you not think, do you not hear, do you feel like yes. we do? Yes. Uh, do you yeah. not when hear, I, when It's me funny because whenever I, I text you that, uh, you know, I was, I was you know, putting on my Child's Play shirt and I was like, I started like humming, I was like started singing that to myself. I'm like, yeah, when you think of Frampton comes alive, like how, how can you not? So you I know? got a Frampton story for you. So Paul Lamanti, my guitar player, 
Gentlemen's gentlemen, Joppa Road, give him a call. Look him up. Walk-ins, welcome. Um, he cuts hair better than this. Uh, so Paul was my guest at a Sticks, I want to say Sticks, Foreigner, Frampton show at, at Nissan Pavilion. Foreigner, foreigner I love they, Foreigner. I love Foreigner. Lo- I, I love, love foreigner. foreigner. Right. I mean, I know. I would have brought the Foreigner yeah, I, 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 I have know. two great I don't know how bands. I did not write that band down when you asked me because – I, Jen and I still go see them, you know. Because you're a dirty white boy. Yeah. <laughs> right, it's because you are. So, <laughs> so. Uh, and a jukebox hero and everything else. Is there an say. Asia belt in that collection? <laughs> Asia didn't come to like 84. Yeah, that's right. There, there's yeah. a lot of yes belts. Yep, that's I, right. I, I wore my yes belt to see Seal. ELO. Because Trevor, Trevor, uh, 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 Tre- Trevor, uh, uh, God, I lost his name. Trevor. Tre- no, no, not Trevor Rabin. Um, Trevor. Trevor Hall, sorry, from uh, from the Buggles, okay. is Seal's musical director. I wore my Yes belt to Seal for that. Nice. For that. So yeah. there's a connection right. in modern music to almost, I can wear one of these belts for almost any show, and I do. I find my, I pick my spots. I wore my Sticks belt to the M3 show because they headlined the show, right. right? So this story's about Sticks. Sticks leaves me and Pauly backstage passes in Nissan. It's way before the plague. JY always lets me hang out, right? right? So JY lets me hang out, and he, he meets me backstage and walks me up to the stage, introduces me to Frampton's people, and Frampton's on stage. Introduces me to Frampton's people and says, these are my friends, let them hang here and watch the show. So at, we're at the board, it's me and Paulie, and Paulie's in a band, so he's not like, you know, I've only done this two or three times in my life. I've, I've been right. on the field for 100 NFL games, right. I, I've been at Super Bowl, all that, yeah. but I've only been on stage, on the right. soundboard, at a big show, Chips Enough had me on the side of the stage when they played with Nelson yeah. doing cheap trick covers. I mean, I remember where I was on the stage because it's special. Mm-hmm. I was on stage with Sammy Hagar at the Universal Amphitheater in the gallery when they're pouring the tequila on the Mas Tequila tour. Right. Yeah. It was fruit juice. Right. You had to sign a waiver that you wouldn't drink <laughs> on stage. You had an agent. Right, right, right. So we're, we're backstage at Peter Frampton and his, his sound guys, like his guys next to me, and I'm like, what happened to Bob Mayo? But Bob Mayo was a kid. He said, Bob, Bob died last year, you know. Like, and I was, I was talking about the band. Yeah. And Frampton comes off stage, and it's all good. And I, I'm not seeking anything or anything like that. And we were just kind of walking around at backstage 30 minutes later, and Frampton was there at the doorway at, at the outside. And Paul, who's a guitar player, like lost his mind. Right. Paul's like, it's Peter Frampton, you know. And I'm like, walks up and say, hi, Peter, how are you? He said, "Hey, mate, how you know? How are you? Nice to meet you." And he, he talk, hey, you play guitar, do you? Yeah, you, you know, like yeah. so. He talked. Hey, hey, let me give you a pick, and he gives Paul a pick. Oh my God, Paul was like, ah, yeah, yeah. ah, yeah. ah <laughs> Peter Frampton. <laughs> Peter Frampton was super cool. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> and I did. It wasn't anything like meet and greet. Wasn't anything. We just bumped yeah, into him. Right. He was leaving. He was going back to the tour bus. Right. Yeah, how are you? You know, was, and we were just in a you know insecure area. We yeah, were just yeah. kind of hanging out. But he was very, very nice. Right. Peter Frampton. That's good and his, to hear. His, yeah. his guy gave me this little keychain that plays. That's why I made the sound when I had this. It's They, they were selling it for 12 bucks. It was mm-hmm. a tchotchke. It was a merch item. Yeah. But his, his, his guy gave me one. Right. And you, you hit it. And it goes wow, wow, oh, really? wow, 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 wow. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. But remember That's the talking great. bobbleheads? Yeah. Chuck yes. Thompson yeah. would yeah. say, ain't the beer cold? This was a talking keychain. Right. And it would play... Yeah. Show me the way. Right. The voice box, <laughs> you know, like uh, that's Chad great. Weasling. Wait, so you wanted some rock and roll. What's yeah. your favorite show? What's the best show you've ever seen in your life? Well, man, I, I tell you what. I mean, I've a uh, lot of the. We're well, speaking of uh, you know Mike Collins, who we you know we uh, call him our Mickey C, who played at Maryland with me back in the day. Krivak, right? Yeah, yeah. I started your Krivak days. And, that resembles uh, Krivak a little bit, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah absolutely, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same hair color, you know. Yep. So yeah, um, but uh, so. It's, it, you know, that was back in, in the old days when you literally had to, you know, as you know, go go wait for tickets if the, if the you know, the cap set. Oh, dude, I was in so, that so, so, my whole so, life. So Mike, I spent a month of my life <laughs> in the parking lot of Rice's Road. So, Mike, so Mike, was, Mike was like, you know, working for a scalper, you know, at that time before he became his, <laughs> the own, his own uh, scalper. Uh, he's business. not a scalper. Uh, he he's a broker. A it's a broker. Yeah, it's a yeah, service. No, exactly. I saw Fast Times. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so we would, Blue Oyster Cult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we would, uh, you know, we'd go wait out in line, stuff, you know, for tickets and do all that stuff. He, we'd get like fifty bucks to, you know, camp out, get all his tickets. So he got me a lot of stuff. And I'm partially, I, I like to say, I'm partially deaf because he would like 
give the me. These seats were too close. <laughs> yeah, right by the speakers, you know, it would be whoever. And it would be like the loudest show I've ever seen was at the Cap Center was ACDC. I couldn't hear for, for three days. I mean, it, was that for those about to rock? Yes, yes. yes. I was at that yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. You know, the cannons going off like. Bong. Oh, I'd be like, I, I'd be like, I can't. Bong. I mean, that was literally. By the way, the other night I'm flipping around on Axis because I didn't have the Orioles game on Peacock. Right. Uh, and ACDC showed up from River Plate in Buenos Aires, 2009. Wow. Brian Johnson in Good Voice, Malcolm right, Young yeah, Alive. Yeah. I had never seen it. Right. I didn't have great sound. This is my little television, you know, like I had yeah. it on. My wife fell asleep. I stayed with it for an hour through Shoot the Thrill and Hell's Bells. Right. It was, ele- I saw the stones there. I saw the stones. Oh, really? Room. Yeah. It was one of the most electrifying places I've ever been in my life. Rio and Buenos Aires, if you see a show in those places, right. go see I would ele- love, see to, you know who I'd love to see down in South America, what it is, Iron Maiden. Go down there. Like, I, 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 go do it. I see them. Go do I, it. I see the, you know, the, the clips on go YouTube and go stuff. And I'm like. You need to be a part of it. Yeah, because Maiden shows are like I saw the Stones in Rio. <laughs> I saw U2 in Sao Paulo. The U2 in Sao Paulo show is one of the most electrifying yeah, things yeah, I've ever right. seen in my life. Yeah. And then we, we saw the Stones again in the River Plate. Right. This is the River Plate, so it all looked very familiar to me. Yeah. Uh, big, right. big, I mean, 140,000-seat right. giant stadium. And, and, um, and, and Brian Johnson doing the catwalk. Yeah. And, and Angus doing like. It made me wish I had seen more of them in that era because right. I jumped the shark on them. Aerosmith is coming. Like, there's some bands that – I saw Brian Adams a couple weeks ago, as good as I've ever seen him. Right. I saw Seal three times last month because it was one of the greatest shows I've ever seen in my life. Right. Anytime, anywhere, over 50 years of seeing concerts, right. I saw Seal, and people were like, Seal? I'm like, go see him. I mean, right. it's just unbelievable. Yeah. And then some bands don't have it. I don't want to right. see Elton John anymore. No. Nah. I love Billy Joel, though. Billy right. Joel still has it, right? right? And Stevie Nicks will see, be... See, I'm a, I'm a big, uh, even still today, I, I haven't seen him on a new tour, but you say what's the best shows. Like, I'm a big Metallica guy. So but there's been some great Metallicas over the years from the late 80s, throughout, you know, when they were starting from uh, Justice for All. That's when I started, I was like, at Merriweather the night that the, the lightning hit the board yeah, and right. Ozzy played. I was yeah, at that yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was at that yeah, show. Yeah, so, you know, so my days, back to, to Mike, I mean, my days at... University of Maryland, which was the you know late eighties, early nineties. That's when this is your music. Yeah, that, yeah. That's every every show that no was at the, get along. Every again. show at the Cap Center, I was there. I was usually. No wonder in, I get the exclusive <laughs> with Josh Jacobs' agent. Out of right. So, life. but I was so you know Metallica, Guns and Roses, all those. I still <laughs> funny thing. I still go. You know, I'm supposed to be. I am this agent and, and working for players, but. When when G and R got back together, now I wish they would get Steven and obviously Izzy back. I think that would be you know if it, if it's going to end, you know, bring the five. They're playing guys. Hershey August 11th. I have right. not seen them in the modern era. Okay, and I, I and I regret it. Everybody right. tells me, yeah, yeah. So, it looks like it's something I want to see. Yeah, so I it's yeah. I mean it's it's yeah. still huge production and you know and, and when they first got back and every tour that they minus the you know nothing was going on during the, the pandemic, but. Uh, I travel like I, I go. I get, you know, I've gone to Wrigley Field, Fenway. I like, I, you know, my players think I'm working, and I'm like, yeah, I'm working. But I'm like watching Guns and Roses. I'm at the concert in the, you have in the to do section. That. Yeah. So the last time, the last tour, the, they are coming, you know, this summer um, back. But the last tour, me and my buddy from from home was like, okay, we've been. We go to the usual. We go to New York, you know, D.C., you know, all the the local Philly, all those things. Um, you know, we, we, we drove to like Winston Salem. We go to, I've seen him in Miami. I've saw all these places like, let's go to some random place. I've been doing and that. We, for years. Yeah. Right. Right. And that's, that's what I'm going to continue to do. It was like Missoula, Montana. Been there. <laughs> been there. We went. Oh, yeah, we been went. There. He yeah. sent me to a great Cuban place there. Right? I saw Pearl Jam. <laughs> My wife and I saw Pearl Jam in 18 and, and we, we drove Yellowstone. Right. We, yeah. we, we took a week. Yeah. Pearl Jam in Missoula was the reason we right. went. Was that at the football stadium? Was it yeah, up? Yeah, was yeah, it yeah, yeah, that's one right. Yeah. One of the greatest vistas in the West. For, oh, for man, games. Missoula. Yeah. Kevin yeah. Van Valkenburg's from there. Yeah, yeah. that's why I went. I flew out there and I've saw been, Guns N' Roses. That's my thing now, you know, is yeah. trying to go, go somewhere to unique. Places. I've never been to the Hollywood Bowl. I, here's a trip right. I have planned next month. Brian Adams and Joan Jett. Joan was at the game this week. Un- it was a great, great night of music. I love Brian Adams. He's playing San Diego on my mother's birthday. And then the next, the next night, um, the, Quincy Jones is being honored at the Hollywood Bowl two nights. John Mayer's – I mean, Quincy Jones. I, right, mean, right. I mean, Michael Jackson won't be there. James Ingram won't be there. But, but I'm assuming Quincy Jones at the Hollywood Bowl is going to bring out 
some some ish, some right. stuff that's going to be live eight ish. Right. You know, like I'm thinking. So I've never been to the Hollywood Bowl, mm-hmm. and I'm figuring one time at the Hollywood Bowl, why not Quincy Jones? Right. The next night they're playing. Brian Adams is playing the Forum. So okay. I would have the choice right. to either go to Quincy Part Two right. or Brian Adams and Joan Jet Part Two, right. and then um, and and fly home. And like right. I'm, I just want to see the Hollywood Bowl. Right. I want to go to Royal Albert. You've been Hall. to Red Rocks. I have. I was just about to ask. So yeah, I have. I have not been to Red I Rocks. I saw Tom Petty and um, and Joe Walsh there. I actually went to the show with Nils Lofgren. Oh wow! One night right. to see Joe Walsh. Yeah. I, I played air guitar to Rocky Mountain Way <laughs> at Red Rocks with Nils Lofgren while Joe Walsh sang it. And there's video of it. Is that right? That's my uh, rock and roll spirit, bro. Right, right. Come on, you know? Awesome. But, but Red Rocks is something everybody should see. But right now, my bucket list for music, Hollywood Bowl on my bucket list, right. R- Royal Albert Hall in London. I had a chance to, to do it when we, the Ravens played, and I, I did, bailed on it. Had the best Indian feel, mood of my, food of my life, but right. I bailed on it. So these things are – the celebrity theater in Phoenix, Arizona, is, the, is Painter's Mill. It's a circle theater. It's the last one. Right. So, like, Sticks played there, like, six weeks ago, and Todd Zuckerman put video up right. in the round. It looks killer. Yeah. It looks like I want to see a show there. I don't right. know what show. Right. But, um, and I don't even care what shows I see at these places anymore. I just want to, like, I've always wanted to go to the Gorge out in, in Washington State. They used to have concerts in the middle of, literally in the middle of a gorge. I never made it there. Uh, you know, I don't have a Coachella thing or anything right, like that. Yeah. I mean, stadium shows and festival shows. Seals playing a bunch of festivals next month in Europe. I don't want to see him in a right, festival. Right. I want to see him in a theater. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Well, you know, if, and I'm not trying to be biased because I'm up from the Hagerstown area. But if you want to ask me what the the best club band is, Kicks. Kicks, no question. Yeah. Are you going to any of the final shows? Oh yeah, I was just at Haram said you know last week or two weeks ago. You went to that yeah, show? Yeah, I was there. And then what a great they're doing for shame. But what now. A, they're doing yeah, great oh yeah, stuff. sorry, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. But what a great like I couldn't be any happier. I already got my tickets for it was sad at M3. I got to say because it's part of my, you know, maybe I don't when they announced that they were retiring. You know, where it I saw like, it, I wasn't at the show that night. I, Stash put it online yeah. instantly. And I was just like, my, I, my heart dropped because it's part of my, that's part of my yeah. life. Yeah. Well, when Jimmy had yeah. the straw, I mean. Yeah, like, I know, like, I know. It made, like, yeah. I think Child's Place opening for them. For they yeah, 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 that's where I was going. That's what it's I was gonna saying. It's a big night. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, how cool was that when they, when they announced it, like, and Child's Place opening up for them? That's that's freaking huge, you know. So I I paid a shitload of money for two seats up front, and I got a bunch of like lawn seats. And for you're gonna lose more hearing. Uh, yeah, I, I hope so. I hope so. so but 19- but kicks is kicks, uh, you know, kicks is and hammer jacks, and you know, up in I've seen them in you know dives and Hagerstown, and you know, it'd be shitty places. I keep saying shit. Sorry, um, but it's uh, <laughs> uh, but you speak truth. Yeah, but they're 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 like. Club wise, I think, and, and you know, I've met I've met bands, you know, other, you know, like from that era or whatever, and they're, um, and I'm one of my closest friends is Fred Corey from Cinderella, like we lived together in Nashville in the late, like kind of late '90s and, and mm. early 2000s. Actually, I got a great story. I went on tour with them. Shake you all night. Uh, yeah, I went on tour with Cinderella, like a few on a tour a bus, book. on a tour bus. We're just gonna write a book on this. So I would talk to you know Jeff, you know. You know, rest in peace, uh, Jeff Labar and, and 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 Eric Brittingham and Fred. And I'd be like, I found yeah. their autographs recently. Yeah, on on a on a, a shake me flat. Yeah, yeah, and, sure, sure, yeah. Sure. And uh, you know, so I was like, hey, you know, what do you think of Kicks, right? You know, because they're a Philly band, right? right? And they'd be like, they they would shoot it straight, like, dude, we didn't want, we never wanted them to to open for us because they, they would, would kill us. they would blow us off yep, the stage. No doubt. Like you know, like no, sh- no shit. <laughs> Here I go again. They're like, yeah, they're they're phenomenal. They're a phenomenal band. And I'm like, like wow. 1998, 99. I wasn't getting my levels right in my headset. Right. I was shouting into the mic. Right. And I, I was losing my voice. This is before I sang in a band. Right. So this is this is probably 90. It's been 97, 98. I wanted to sing in a band. I was mm-hmm. capable of singing in a band, except I screamed into the radio four hours a day, every day, right. taking phone calls. And by Friday, I was like this, and. Steve Whiteman offered me voice lessons. I met him over at Harford Road, ironically enough, two blocks south of the barn. There was a drum shop there. I think John Allen gave lessons right. there in the day, right. too. And uh, Steve Whiteman gave me voice lessons about five times. And I went over and I met him, I think, Monday nights yeah. after I work. And he'd say, sit up straight. Now, me, 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 me. He taught me all of these techniques. Right. From down here, you, you do it from down here, right. not up here. Down here, that's pretty good, Steve. Right? Yeah, yeah that was absolutely. A bad, yeah. Right? That was pretty good. But Steve helped me, and I and I I've, I've never been hoarse since. 
that right? Tommy Shaw told me to drink throat coat tea, the licorice tea. Mm-hmm. That's what he does. Okay. So there's little tricks that I got from rock stars right. back then. <laughs> they got to do something. Because like, I was like losing my – Yeah. Like, I have five minutes with a rock star, and I can talk about come yeah. sail I mean, away. Or and I can think say, about back in the day when they're, you know, they're smoking cigarettes <laughs> oh, and yeah, everything man. else. Daryl Hall's blowing <laughs> heaters on the side of the stage. <laughs> right, right. Rick's brought me a crab cake. I got Not to a mention break. anything else Rick, they're doing. crab cake over here, man. Yeah. Hold on. Rick Keogh's here for – we're at Spirits West. We, we, we lost ourselves in rock and roll, yeah, yeah, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. Man, I didn't even tell you about the Triumph uh, uh, documentary I saw oh, recently. Really good. Rick's here. He's going to be our next guest. The softball king. He's upset that I'm leaving to go to yoga. Oh, my God. That looks delicious. That looks like West Baltimore right there. There you go. Now, on this crab cake tour, you ranking, like, your opinion? No, like, no, I just give, you're like. You're just getting free crab no, cakes. I talk, around uh, me, like, no, hey, I'm, I'm paying meals. for this. <laughs> I, I talked about, this is affordable here. It's West Baltimore. What do you charge for this? <laughs> Let me know after price. I eat it. Hey, oh, we we got to make some room. Yeah. We got, we got, we got sorry, visitors here. No problem. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. i got to eat this crab cake. Rick's here. We're at Spirits West. It's all brought to you by our friends at the Maryland Lottery. I've got uh, Pacifica belt buckles and Child's Play gear here. Uh, my thanks to, to John for uh, putting the band back together and making Child's Play happen. Uh, and we're going to come see you play, John, and everybody else. Maryland Lottery presents the crab cake tour. We're out on the road. We're going to be at Fadley's next week and our friends at uh, Window Nation. I have not worn the floppy hat. I'll probably do that in the last segment when I eat the crab cake. 866 nation If you need windows, they're great people. Stand behind the work. Install them the right way, just like uh, you're doing uh, Josh the right way, and uh, you're doing Catholic League. What are, you, what are you doing right now? What are your gigs? Uh, Baltimore Catholic League. We've got the NBA draft, and Cam Whitmore from March Bishop Spalding uh, going to be taking He'll be on a team oh, by the yeah. time they hear this. That's exactly right. And uh, the Pro Football Writers of America, it's that time of year. Start work on record book and getting ready for the upcoming season. There you go. Maybe writing about a bunch about his clients and uh, the awards they win coming yeah, up. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Is there anything you want to? You gonna get your guys signed, or is it like not? It, can it not happen before the season, or is there still a chance, or, or is there hope, or be you, know, you can't be on it? Like, give me, give me the truth. No, I mean, there's, you know, it's got to take both sides, you know. So it's, um, you know, that's the the first thing. And the one thing I've learned in this business is that. You know, everything works at deadlines. So it's, and they're you know, not motivated right now. No, nah, yeah. So, so you understand that. Yeah, I'm not they're all on vacation now. They're on vacation. The, the Andrew Brandt deadline spur action. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. So, you know, I, I expect hopefully, and I'll go with hopefully, that, you know, July 15th or 16th, you know, that I'll, the phone will start ringing and, and meaningful conversations You want start him happening. to have a contract. He wants to have a contract. He wants to be a Raider. He wants to be a Raider, yes. And that's that. Yeah, yes, And, and you're, you, you'd like to get – Three, four, one, yeah, yeah, yeah just sign right. up, whatever. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, he want, yeah, wants some little bit of security. He's, he's proven what he can do, and he's put in his time, and it's time just turned 25, and it's time for him to, you know, at least have a little bit of security. Yep, no doubt. Well, I hope you buy my ass crab cake when he gets paid, and I hope he gets oh, paid. Oh, absolutely. Well, I, I will. Hey, man, I, I love you and your wife, and, like, when he's out running on Monday Night Football and I'm watching, I always say to what? hey, that's Weasling's guy right there. You know, let's keep him healthy. <laughs> you know, right, let's get right. 100 yards and let's get a victory here, two touchdowns, you know. Right, right. And my boy JT the Brick is the voice of the Raiders, right? right. I mean, you know, does pre and post and all that stuff. Yeah. So – Brick's going to be, hey, you hung out with Weasling. What's going on? Right, right, you know, right, right. Yeah, that's so what anyway, I get all the time. Uh, Chris is going to get back to work. Chad's going to get back to sunning himself and listening and waiting for the Child's Play reunion. Uh, and <laughs> I'm going to be – Little te- Rat Race. I'll be jamming the Rat Race. Yep, you know, you great, album, you, great album. Great album. Long, Phenomenal album. Long time pin- punches knocked the wind out of me. Oh, there you sure go, it's um, Maryland Lottery and our friends at Window Nation. We're at Spirits West. We're coming back. I'm going to eat this crab cake. I'm going to devour this crab cake. I might blow off yoga and have a beer and sing the Notre Dame fight song. Back for more from Spirits West. We're at Wilkins Avenue. Stay with us.